What are you looking for? My brothers and sisters, did you know that these are the very first words that Jesus actually speaks in John's gospel account? What are you looking for? And that question opens the door for us, for you and me, to awaken to the greatest desire in the depths of our hearts. So let's just look for a moment at the scene in today's gospel story. Now these two disciples of John the baptizer have their interest and curiosity aroused when John the baptizer singles out Jesus to them and calls him the Lamb of God. So off they go to find out for themselves just what this man is all about. Now, the gospel really doesn't say how long these two men actually followed Jesus around at first. It could have been a few hours or a few days or even longer for that matter. But at some point, they were pretty much just curiosity seekers. They were watching, listening, observing, admiring, perhaps even beginning to develop a deep sense of awe and reverence for this amazing teacher. After all, his teaching was so deep and rich, sending chills up and down their spines. His care and compassion for average people, both the good and the bad alike, was unlike anyone that they had ever met before. And then there were all those amazing miracles. How could they resist coming back time and time again to see this remarkable man who was getting more and more popular all the time, drawing larger and larger crowds and attracting more attention every day? Now, sisters and brothers, If that was all that Jesus was looking for, a crowd of people to listen to him or admire him, or some groupies to follow him around in adoration, or even people to come and worship him, then all of Jesus' charismatic preaching and his profound teachings and miraculous cures would have pretty much done the trick, don't you think? But Jesus' call, God's call, transcends far beyond the level of an initial attraction to the deepest, most intimate levels of relationship that you or I could ever imagine. And so John says that Jesus turned, focused his gaze on them, and offered them an invitation to a much deeper level of a personal relationship. What are you looking for? He says. And so in an instant, these men are no longer just part of a crowd of occasional visitors, curiosity seekers, or groupies. But Jesus has opened the door of their hearts to discover something much deeper and infinitely more fulfilling. Suddenly, they have the courage to ask Jesus something that has probably been on the, in stirring in their hearts for some time now. Where are you staying? But let's stop for a moment and examine this question just a little more closely, though. You see, the question that these two men ask Jesus, where are you staying, It's not an ordinary inquiry about Jesus' address. (laughs) The word that John uses in this gospel, the Greek word for staying, is the same word that he uses again later on toward the end of this gospel 
when he recounts Jesus' prayer during the Last Supper. You see, during that prayer, Jesus instructs his disciples, and John uses the same word here, stay in me as I am staying in the Father. In other words, dwell in me as I am dwelling in my Father. And so the question that these two men ask then is more like, where do you dwell? Or even more closely, who are you? What are you about? And so then Jesus' invitation to come and see is nothing less than an invitation to come and live with or come and dwell with me. With only three little words, Jesus invites these two men out of just being part of a crowd of anonymous followers or occasional visitors into an intimate relationship with him as members of his own family, living with him where he lives and dwelling with him where he dwells. <clears throat> so the Spirit of God attracts you and me time and time again to listen to him, to admire him, and yes, even to worship and adore him. But Jesus' invitation, God's invite for you and for me, transcends far beyond these things to deeper levels of intimate relationship than we could ever have imagined. On this Sunday, at the beginning of this extraordinary, ordinary time, Jesus is turning to fix his gaze on you and on me. And he is asking us, what are you really looking for? My friends, listening to God's word in the scriptures and adoring Jesus in the blessed sacrament, attending mass every Sunday, studying our Catholic faith and praying our prayers and novenas, well, these are all ways in which you and I attempt to discover what we're really looking for, the place where Christ dwells. At the deepest level of our being, we want to know where God dwells. And God's invitation is always the same. Come and see. Come and dwell with me. Come and live with me. Live your life with me. I want more than just occasional visits on Sundays and holy days, prayers before meals, or fervent prayers in times of great need. I want you to come and stay with me the whole day. Not your day, but my day. The everlasting day. I believe this story that I have here breaks open for us a deeper meaning of Jesus' desire to dwell with us. There was a teenage girl named Anne who got a summer job working in a hotel on an oceanside, at an Oceanside resort. Her job was to clean 10 rooms every day. In the course of the summer, Anne met all kinds of interesting people including a few celebrities. Of all the people she met, however, one stood out from all the others. She called him Mr. Smith. Now, Mr. Smith showed up one weekend with only an overnight bag. When Ann went to clean his room, he stuck his head out of the door and said, forget about cleaning my room, just give me a couple of clean towels. The next two days were exactly the same. 
It wasn't until midweek that Mr. Smith allowed Anne to clean the room. As she did, he talked with her and even helped her make the bed. On Saturday, Anne cleaned her usual 10 rooms, including Mr. Smith's room. After she finished, Anne was walking down the sidewalk on her way to 430 Mass when she noticed a man walking very slowly several feet in front of her. As she caught up to him and was passing him by, she noticed it was Mr. Smith. And as she was going by, she smiled and greeted him. Mr. Smith smiled and asked, where are you going in such a hurry? She said she was going to church and didn't want to be late. Mr. Smith picked up his pace to match hers and asked if she minded if he tagged along. She, she said she didn't mind. And off they both walked towards the church. Now, it wasn't long before Mr. Smith was asking Anne a barrage of questions. How often did she go to Mass? Why did she go when lots of other teenagers don't? How good were the homilies? Did she always receive communion? Anne began to feel a little wary about this stranger and his odd questions, but she simply looked at him and said, well, come and see. Then her feelings eased when Mr. Smith came in and knelt down and closed his eyes and remained that way throughout the whole mass. At the end of Mass, Mr. Smith got up and hurried outside without even saying goodbye. The next day, when Anne went to clean his room, the travel bag was gone. In its place was a small box with a note attached. She unfolded it and read this. Dear Anne, the gift inside the box is for the beautiful thing you've done for me without even knowing it. My marriage has been rather shaky lately, so much so that I finally told my wife that I was moving out for a few days to think things over. But the more I thought, though, the more confused I got. Then you came along. You invited me to come and see your beautiful faith in God touched me deeply. When I attended Mass with you, it was for the first time in 10 years. During that Mass, I felt loved and welcomed by God even after all those years. And I was filled with a desire to reconcile with my wife and family whom I love. And I knew I needed to return home to stay with them. I'm going home, grateful to God and grateful to you for being a shining light in a time when my world was very dark. I will never forget you for helping me rediscover my faith. Signed, Mr. Smith. Inside the box was a gold chain with a beautiful gold cross attached to it. My friends, Jesus wants you and me to be more than just occasional visitors or even frequent visitors, curiosity on, curious onlookers or groupies or even worshipers. <laughs> Jesus wants us to come and see, come and live our lives with him to come and dwell with him. What are we looking for? We're looking for the place where God dwells. Ironically though, God's dwelling place is nearer than we could have ever imagined. St. Paul tells us in our second reading today that we are in fact the very temples of God tabernacles, as it were. We are the dwelling place of Christ. 
You and I are reminded every time we eat his body and drink his blood that he, in fact, dwells in us. We are his tabernacles. So what are you looking for? The place where God dwells? Well, the answer is still the same. Come and see. Come and see.